Rain, sleet and snow tracking its way south eastwards. Very cold air tucking in behind the blue really exploding on the map there. It's turning much colder with a widespread frost as we start Wednesday morning. Temperatures typically in our towns and cities falling below freezing. But out in the countryside, it will be a lot colder than this, especially where there's remaining snow cover on the ground. Through Wednesday morning, then, it's a bright and sunny start for many northern and eastern parts of the UK. But skies clouding over to the west and heavy rain pushing in soon after with the potential for some snow on its fairly leading edge. Staying unsettled through the rest of the week, but milder again by Friday. Bye bye. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. It's all about family. Being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it! Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten tonight. RIP the BBC. Today is the day the British bashing corporation, as we know it, died after its toothless director general capitulated by allowing Gary Lineker back on air to hell with political impartiality. I've always said we need to take proportionate action. For some people, by the way, we've taken too severe action, David. Others think we're being too lenient. I'll explain why that humiliating U-turn means defunding the BBC must now be a national priority in my digest next. Then I'll get the view of my superstar panel tonight. I'm joined by Carol Malone, Benjamin Butterworth and Belinda DeLucy. But do you still 
believe the BBC is impartial. You can vote in our Twitter poll right now before footballing legends Matt Letizier and Dean Windass go head to head in the clash. Plus, after match of the day was selfishly taken off air by a whole different type of strike striker this weekend with uh, Gary's taxpayer funded lefty lovey mates walking out on viewers. Should the BBC axe all the millionaire moaners who backed him? Well, Calvin McKenzie is live and unmissable on that later in the show. Elsewhere tonight, as Suella Braverman orders police to stop the Orwellian recording of the names of people accused of non-crime hate incidents, has Lawrence Fox won his free speech battle against woke coppers? He explores in the Fox report shortly. Also coming up, a bombshell poll has revealed support for Scottish separatism has plunged to 39%, just 39% since Scheming Sturgeon resigned. But the party's continuity candidate is doing all he can to get the rabid base on side. To achieve independence, we will use any means necessary. That is within a legal framework, of course. So is the Scottish separatism campaign about to be turned extreme as they fight for survival while our man and Sterling Neil Oliver weighs it? With Meghan Markle reportedly planning to become an agony aunt in a resurrection of her wellness vlog, while also hypocritically claiming her children's prince and princess titles are a birthright, top Daily Telegraph columnist Celia Walden joins me to analyse the sharp decline of Brand Sussex and their desperate search for relevance. Plus, it seems Hugh Grant's hacked off again. What are you wearing tonight then? Just my suit. Your suit? Who yeah. made your suit? You didn't make it. Um, I can't remember my tailor. That's okay. Yeah. Ta shout out to the tailor. Yeah. Um. Catch more of the most miserable man in showbiz and his red carpet car crash later, plus other woke moments from the Academy Awards and the media buzz. We'll have a first look at tomorrow's newspaper front pages as always and a brand new greatest British Union jackass coming up too. This is Dan Watson tonight. Let's go. It's great to be back. I have missed you these past couple of weeks, and boy, oh boy, I have a lot to say tonight. But before all of that, the news with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you, and good evening to you. The top story on GB News tonight. British firm Rolls-Royce will be helping build a new fleet of nuclear-powered submarines as part of a new pact between the UK, Australia and the United States to bolster defences and create thousands of jobs. The Prime Minister, his Australian counterpart, Anthony Albanese, and US President Joe Biden met in San Diego in the States to announce the next stage of the AUKUS programme, as it's called. It was signed by the three nations in 2021 to boost defences and counter China's threat in the Indo-Pacific region. That comes as number 10 announced today defence spending will rise by almost £5 billion over two years. And Mr Sunak earlier praised the relationship between the UK and America. Our relationship with America economically is very strong. Our exports are growing massively anyway, and we are concluding agreements with states. Remember, many American states are as big as most countries, and actually increasing our economic ties at a state level is something that can be really good for Britain and good for jobs, and so we're getting on and doing that. Meanwhile, here at home, the government's illegal migration bill is still currently being debated in the House of Commons tonight. The legislation will allow for the removal of channel migrants from the UK. We'll keep you updated on that as it passes through Parliament, currently on the second reading. Now, as you've been hearing, TV presenter Gary Lineker has been reinstated to Match of the Day presenting after reaching an agreement with the BBC today. That's after he was taken off air last week over a tweet on the government's illegal migration bill. Well, the BBC Director General has apologised and said the corporation is now launching an independent review of its social media guidelines. The board has also welcomed the move, saying impartiality is a cornerstone of the BBC. Well, speaking to the BBC, Director General Tim Davey said he took proportionate action. We're just breaking within the last couple of hours the news that the disgraced pop star Gary Glitter has been recalled to prison after breaching his licence conditions. The 78-year-old was released last month after serving half of his 16-year sentence for sexually abusing three young girls. In a statement, the Ministry of Justice said protecting the public was their number one priority. 
And news coming to us within the last hour, we've heard that Dick Fosbury, who of course revolutionised the high jump in athletics, has died at the age of 76. His agent saying he passed away peacefully in his sleep early on Sunday morning following a battle with lymphoma. Fosbury used his new technique to win the gold medal at the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City and thousands upon thousands copied his style ever after that. Now, King Charles and other members of the royal family have attended a cel service celebrating Commonwealth Day at Westminster Abbey today. <laughs> Well, the King focused his speech on the theme of forging a sustainable and peaceful common future. King Charles saying a commitment to peace, progress and opportunity will sustain the Commonwealth. That's all from the newsroom. We're back in an hour. Now more from Dan. Rest in peace, the British Bashing Corporation. Gary Lineker and the woke mob of millionaire champagne socialists might think they've had a great victory today, but they're wrong. The weak Director General, Tim Davies' pathetic decision to cast aside the principles of impartiality he claimed to hold so dear in favour of celebrity lovey fest boycotts, which saw sports fans left high and dry all weekend with no regular football programme, well, to me... This is the end of the BBC as we know it. And I'll tell you why. Davy is admitting that the Beeb can no longer even enforce the pretense of impartiality. Now, of course, you and me, we know the crooked corporation has been as biased as it possibly could be since its hatred for Brexit in 2016, followed by its campaigning against Boris Johnson and J.K. Rowling, embrace of lockdowns, COVID hysteria and Nicola Sturgeon, and complete hatred of red wall voters who want to stoke the boats. So here's how Davy tried to justify the most humiliating TV U-turn in living memory. I've always said we need to take proportionate action. For some people, by the way, we've taken too severe action, David. Others think we're being too lenient. One of the joys of this affair is there'd never been an easy solution, but asking Gary to step back off air was, I think, a significant thing and now we look forward with this agreement moving forward to resolve things and get back to business as usual. What a joker, what a joker. You've resolved nothing, nothing apart from empowering BBC celebrities to use the platform and massive salary gifted to them by licence payers like you and me to launch political campaigns. For once, Lineker had nothing to say. Um, I, I've already said what I'm going to say on Twitter. Um, if I say anything more now, it just encourages people to doorstep me. Oh, that's right. Twitter. Twitter. Where Lineker, even today, continued his campaign against the majority of Brits who believe it's absolutely essential we stop the boats to protect our country against an invasion of illegal migrants, many of whom are criminals, and for humanitarian reasons, to stop the dastardly people smuggling gangs risking lives for cash. But, of course, that's not how Lineker and his cabal of left-wing autocue readers see it. This is what he wrote. A final thought. However difficult the last few days have been, it simply doesn't compare to having to flee your home from persecution or war to seek refuge in a land far away. It's heartwarming to have seen the empathy towards their plight from so many of you. We remain a country of predominantly tolerant, welcoming and generous people. Thank you. So what Lineker is implying there is that if you disagree with his highly irresponsible and dangerous open borders policy, just like his disgusting rhetoric comparing superwoman Suala Braverman's stop the boats policy to 1930s Germany, if you disagree with that, then you are a hateful racist bigot. And this is why the BBC no longer represents the majority of the country. It's also incredibly intellectually dishonest, as is, by the way, turning this Lineker debacle into an issue of free speech. Because the BBC don't give a damn about free speech. 
Look at how they treat coverage of the trans debate. And have they even interviewed one victim of the COVID vaccine? I don't think so. During the three years of interminable lockdowns, virtually any dissenting voice was silenced, even proven experts. So this is nothing about freedom of speech. Lineker signed his right to be party political away when he agreed to the BBC's stringent social media policies in 2020. He had the choice. And since then, he's made a mockery of the concept of the need to be impartial while working for the BBC. Which every country, including our own, has got issues. And we're off to America in four years' time. See, America's an extraordinarily racist country. Brexit is a game where 66 million people kick themselves about for two and a half years. And in the end, Britain wins the Golden Dumbass Award. There is no good Brexit deal, so good luck with that. Imagine how hopeless you'd have to be to still be behind the Tory party in the polls. The absolute state of our politics. And her party will hand back their donations from Russian donors. She was a child, manipulated and groomed. This feels very wrong. If it's not already too late, history will look back very favourably on these people. There is no huge influx. We take far fewer refugees than other European countries. This is just an immeasurably cruel policy directed at the most vulnerable people in language that is not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 30s. And am I out of order? So, as I say, Lineker's left-wing disciples today might think they've won, but they've lost the right to charge us a disgusting poll tax of £159 every single year simply to watch television. And by the way, if we don't pay it, we face jail. With even the veneer that the BBC wants to be impartial in the future smashed to smithereens by Lineker and his privileged band of overpaid left-wing presenters, it is now immoral to force anyone to pay the licence fee. The time for the BBC to be defunded is here. But to respond now, my superstar panel, the broadcaster and journalist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper Benjamin Butterworth and the former Brexit Party MEP and political commentator Belinda de Lucy. Carol Malone, when Tim Davey got the job, he said mm. the thing he cared about more than anything else mm. was impartiality. Mm. Rubbish. What he cares about is pandering to his left-wing mob of presenters and staying in post no matter what it takes. Yeah. He, um, he signed his own death warrant today with that. I, I, I was in the car and I listened to that statement and I couldn't believe how pathetic and how weaselly it was. Not once did he mention the fact that Lineker had breached impartiality rules, which the BBC announced at the end of last week. They said he absolutely had. He talked about getting Match of the Day back on the air. He talked about changing the impartiality rules for the likes of Lineker. So he's going to change the rules for Lineker. And on the old piece of film there, he actually said, you know, asking him to step back, oh, please, like, that's some big thing. You know, both Lineker and the Stooges who refused to appear, those Stooges who refused to appear, Shearer and Wright, they should have their contracts looked at. Now, the mm. contract shouldn't be renewed. Davy should not renew their contract. But we know that he will. It's, you know... Yeah, because we know who's running the BBC yeah. now. And today, I think what Davy made clear was that... Lineker is more important than the five billion fun, you know, publicly funded mm. BBC. And that is shocking, because you're right. And, and, you know, him and everybody else is trying to make this about freedom of speech. Oh. This was never Rubbish. about freedom of speech. It, it really annoyed me on Saturday when people were tweeting, because I did my column lead on this, and they're saying it's freedom of speech. No, it's not about no. that. It's about this 100-year-old institution. It has the Royal Charter, and a, and a condition of that is that they stick by the impartial impartiality rules scrupulously. They have to be scrupulously impartial. They have not been. In the past two or three years, Lineker, ten breaches of those rules. And what has happened to him? Nothing. And today, Lineker just let him off. He now... Lineker will now be able to do and say... Oh, he's untouchable. He was. And also, he's untouchable. his little and mateys... he's made himself a martyr. He, and his, but his little mateys have made clear their left-wing views as well. They have. So they've, they've made, you know, they've made clear they where they stand. They're not impartial. But, Linda Lucy, can we just tackle this freedom of speech thing, by the way? Because I don't give a damn if Gary Lineker wants to spend his entire life, every hour, comparing the Tory party ridiculously to the Nazis. I'd think he's stupid and embarrassing, because he is. But he can do that. 
not while you're being paid for by us. That's exactly the point. And actually, the more sort of lefty lovies that use the Nazi comparison to describe moderate, reasonable, conservative mm. policy, the better, because what they're doing is they're revealing... Um, a, a grotesque belittling of the Holocaust. Mm. And this is what I find so strange that the left are championing uh, Gary Lineker at the moment and not actually criticising this horrific comparison he made. Because the more you belittle the Holocaust, the more you make it something that you can dismiss so easily that it's comparable to a moderate Tory policy, the more you are actually playing out of the handbook of the far right. Indeed. It is and neo Nazis humane, that belittle the Holocaust. And a humane Holocaust. policy, by the yes, way. It's a because humane stopping policy. The boats is humane because yeah. by failing to stop the boats and having an open borders policy, which is what Lineker wants, which is what Starmer wants, what you're actually doing is empowering these people smuggling gangs, allowing them to take advantage it's, of vulnerable yeah. people who will be killed. They're not the on channel. the side of genuine refugees. If they were on the side of genuine refugees, mm. they would support a bill that stopped mm. this breach of our borders mm. by illegals and, and support actually focusing on genuine refugees. But they don't. They support why do, why Albanians do... and undocumented men by their tens of thousands coming into the country. Why do the left insist on trying to tell us all, when we know factually it's not true, that every single one... Every single person on those boats is a genuine well, refugee. Well, let's ask their flag yeah. waver. No, they're not. Let's ask their flag waver. Benjamin Butterworth, <laughs> uh, surely even you have to admit that BBC impartiality is out the window now, so there's no way that someone like me should be forced to pay a licence fee. I mean, look, Dan, welcome back. You, <laughs> you might be older, but clearly not wiser. Uh, oh, I, fe I feel like that? I turned 40 <laughs> when I was away. Yes. yes! I feel like I'm on Freaky Friday because you might self-identify as a champion of free speech, but tonight the three of you have shown your true colours as people who Rubbish. want to about free someone speech. because of having an unpopular Rubbish. opinion. It's not about free Would speech. I be hired by the BBC, Benjamin? Would Nigel Farage be hired by the BBC? No. Would Jacob Rees-Mogg be hired by the BBC? Would Carol Malone be hired by the BBC? Would Belinda de Lucy be hired by the BBC? <laughs> not a well, No, 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 no. <laughs> because well, we express our partisan opinions. Well, you'd probably get a job as uh, chairman of the BBC or director general because they're both Tories. You sit there and... Just claim, like Gavin Davies there, was a BBC... Uh, Come on, uh, my freedom of speech up. now, I want to say something. You sit there and you say that Gary Lineker should be fired because he expressed a, a political view of you no. against the government. I'm no. going to say my piece, right? Why is it that you don't say anything about the Director-General, Tim Davey, who is a Tory councillor, chair of the Tories in Hannah, Sith and Pulham? You Fulham. missed the point. Why don't you... Yes. Know, let me finish. That Why don't you say something Katie about Blow. Richard Sharp, who, during Boris okay, Johnson's tenure, no, no, you've asked donated 800,000... You've raised a really important point. You've raised a really important point. You've asked me a question, let me respond. Uh, because it's very important that you understand this. So, firstly, Tim Davey uh, ran to be a Tory councillor decades ago. Uh, since joining the BBC, he has given up any political campaign. So that's but that. we know his politics. Uh, in terms of the chairman you don't of them. the BBC, that is a political appointment. It always has been. The Labour Party had absolutely no problem when under Tony Blair they were hiring Labour stooges. And by the way, Greg Dyke, the editor-in-chief of the BBC as director-general for a long time, was a member of the Labour Party up until the day he joined the BBC. What but is what different you... here is these are the people who are on television communicating with the yeah. nation, using their BBC platform to gain social media followers and then using that social media right. following to try and get the Tories out of office. But what you don't get is that you're being a hypocrite because you're saying some people with politics should go and others should stay the ones that share yours. But right, you no, make the no. point. No. You say... No, no, I'm, no talking about, I'm, saying that. I'm talking about the fact that the chairman role is very different to the presenting role. All right, all right. He was well, appointed, I'll take, I'll he was take, no, I'll take, I'll take you on your point, That's Dan. That's what happens. You say that this should apply to people on screen, not, not the senior staff at the decision-making level. Correct. Well, in, in that case, why was it that they had Andrew Neil, who, while in charge of this head politics, interviewer was chair of the right wing largely Tory supporting Spectator magazine. Good question. Why is it that they had Michael Portillo who hosts the Great British Brilliant Railways here while now, sat here at News. GB News on a host? Why aren't He's you saying he now. should be fired? Well, we're not disagreeing Why is with it you, that Benjamin? Lord Alan Sugar said don't vote for Boris Johnson, you don't you're vote for You're fired you Sugar. <laughs> you're fired. No, but hang on. You are I'm not being hypocritical. I don't think BBC Why did you never say anything about any of them? You're missing the point here. No, you're missing the point. Gary Lineker's 
public platform is courtesy of the BBC. Do you not think that if he hadn't worked for the BBC these last 30 years and he was just a retired footballer who 30 mm. years ago was a good sco goal scorer, do you think he'd have 8.6 million followers on Twitter? I, I think do you think, think be, anyone I, would listen to a I word I think he'd be paid he a lot more money if he yeah. didn't no work for the BBC. And, no no and do you know what, Carol? Very good point, because now what the BBC has done is it's opened the door for all of these yeah. presenters using the platform and given by them, so just the BBC to, to gain a huge social media following, which they will then use for party political purposes. As a result, the BBC is over, guys. This is the end but, of the BBC as we know it, but, as a licensed uh, fee And we should all be very sad about that, because this was... A, I'm not. We, we love... I love the BBC. Many Brits love the BBC and feel like it's been stolen from us. No, it's been taken don't. away from us what by political activists. Yeah, but a lot of time ago, and also, we've got to accept that the media... Why don't you talk about the actual The licence fee is enforced taxation on the people of this country. Gary Lineker is allowed to say what he wants now. It needs to be up to us we have no choice about that criminalisation of the licence fee needs to happen as soon Agreed. as possible. Yes. Carol Malone, <laughs> Benjamin Butterworth, Bill and Lucy, my superstar panel are here all night. But the Fox Report with Lawrence Fox on the way and as Suala Braverman hits back at British police for the senseless recording of non-crime hate incidents, we're asking if the war against woke policing has finally been won. But up next, in The Clash, former Premier League footballer Dean Windass goes head-to-head -head with ex-England international and pundit Matt Letizia on whether the BBC can claim to be truly impartial after reinstating Lineker. They're here straight after the break, but I want to know what you think. I've missed your views these past couple of weeks. Email me, dan at gbnews.uk. Tweet me using the handle at gbnews. Our poll results coming up too. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting, they're itching to go, and it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture and sometimes even ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Click that bit off. Well, you are. You, that's you, my you, you, no. My political ambitions are, <laughs> those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing, go on. He's probably gonna want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes to have one. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubry, weekday evenings at six o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. <laughs> We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. 
expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it today! I, 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 I Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GV News, the People's Channel. Lawrence Fox and Neil Oliver both on the way, but it's time now for The Clash. And after the corporation pathetically capitulated for, uh, by allowing Gary Lineker back on air, do you believe uh, the BBC is impartial? That's what we're asking tonight. Send me your thoughts to dan at gbnews.uk. Tweet me at gbnews. I'll poll running there too. Cannot wait to bring you those results shortly. But first, to tackle this issue, let me bring in former England footballer and respected pundit Matt Letizia and ex-Premier League striker Dean Windass. So, Letiz, my goodness, I've been looking forward to talking to you about this for the past couple of weeks. I've obviously <laughs> seen some of your comments referencing the fact that maybe the BBC is wrong to back Lineker in this way, given he's not exactly an angel uh, in your words. But what do you think now, after the fact that they have reinstated him, does this now prove forevermore that the BBC can no longer say they're an impartial organisation? Uh, well, firstly, uh, evening, Dido. How are you, mate? Um, and secondly... Um, I think you're absolutely right. The BBC, for me, hasn't been impartial for a very long time. Uh, I think this just confirms it. It was no big surprise that, that Gary got his job back. Um, let's be honest, if he had said those things as somebody on the right-hand side of the political spectrum, uh, I think we could all be pretty certain that uh, there would be no job for him now. Uh, there, are, there are rules for thee, but not for me, uh, unfortunately. And the, the BBC, over the last few years, have had zero amount of debate, zero amount of balance on their channel over the last three years. The, their reporters in the press conferences um, uh, where Boris Johnson was, was being questioned have been absolutely ludicrous. Not a single one of them asked a pertinent question which any member of the public would have wanted them to ask. Uh, and they are a sham of an organisation and have been, in my opinion, for, for quite a long time. Well, indeed. Indeed. And I, I, I would say, Matt, uh, they never provided any freedom of speech for folk who questioned either the lockdowns, uh, the, the vaccine, the COVID vaccine. They haven't given any platform for the vaccine injured. And they've also been incredibly one-sided on the trans debate. So all of that I hear. Uh, but Dean Windass, you're saying actually they're right to have forgiven Lineker and Wright and Sharer and all of all of the other pundits. Why? I mean, they didn't even bother to turn up for work. What? Why should they be forgiven? Well, I, I, I'm not saying they was right about what what Gary had done. I, the the one thing I was confused about was that does Alan Sharer and Ian Wright agree with Gary, or do they disagree with the BBC that the the, the, the suspended Gary? Good and, question. You know, they've gone and, they've gone about the wrong way about it in the first place. I think they should have they should have they should have done match of the day and then dealt with it afterwards. But I think that, listen, the, the, the world's a mess as it is, isn't it? And, you know, there's, what, 500,000 asylum seekers in the country and the NHS, it's on his knees. And, and you know, so where, where are we going to put these people? That's, that's, that's my confusion. And obviously Gary's come out on his tweet. I, I totally agree with, with, with Tiz. You know, he, he got treated in the wrong way. So why is, why is Tiz different to, to Gary? But... You know, it's, it's just a strange one for me. It's a very strange one. But you still think the BBC was wrong to take Gary off air? I do. I do for, for, the, for the couple of days. I thought that maybe they should have played match of the day um, and then dealt with it afterwards. But the four days has been a car crash in a sense of what's gone on and what's been said. You know, if you deal with it after the show and then, then you've got sort of a week to, to sort it out for till obviously till the next match of the day appears on the screen but you know they've I think they've dealt with it the wrong way and obviously Gary's Gary's had his opinion and obviously um you know does Alan and Ian agree with his opinion or does he agree with they agree but with, they do uh, agree don't but Latis isn't this the point they do agree and actually I think uh by all of these presenters walking off they've actually proven the point that someone like B has been making for years. They do all think the same way because I'll give you another example, which is football related, taking the knee. If you tuned into match of the day, uh, you would have thought 
that there was a monolithic way to think about this. You would have thought that 99.9% .9 of Brits believed that the BLM organisation were right and that the knee should be taken before every football game. The BBC didn't allow any debate over that significant culture war issue. And I think that's why they've got to be incredibly careful with impartiality because it does bleed into football coverage. Football is such a big part of our nation. And so many of our big debates about where we're heading as a country do involve football. Yeah, and I think as well, um, you know, the, the the monologue that Gary gave when the World Cup opened as well. Mm. Um, I mean, if you know, if you're meant to be, uh, you know, not biased in any way, shape, or form, um, then uh, they should have steered steered clear of that. I mean, if Gary was that bothered, he probably would have turned down the money from uh, from going to work at the World Cup. Um, but you know, that's that's his prerogative. Uh, he's got to uh, put his head on the pillow and, and sleep at night, uh, and that's absolutely fine if he can do that. No problem at all. But and I've always defended Gary's right to to free speech and having an opinion. Yeah, yeah. As long as he's as long as he's not breaching his contract, and that's the big point. And I think that's what the point that should have been made is that is that we should have been able to access uh, the details of his contract so that we could see and we could tell for ourselves if he had breached uh, any of the uh, any of the clauses in that contract. And if he had breached them then that's a sackable offence. Well, the point is, he has certainly breached the published social media guidelines of 2020. As part of signing his BBC contract, he had to sign up to those social media guidelines. And that's the point for me. He chose to sign up. I don't give a damn if, if Lineker wants to spend all day, every day, tweeting anti-Tory talking points and comparing them to the Nazi party. Just don't do it while you're working at the BBC because you're turning the organisation into a joke. But look, can we just speak about Gary Lineker personally? Dean Windass, why does he have so much loyalty from the sporting world, from the footballing world? Why were so many people prepared to walk out in solidarity? What is it about Gary Lineker that holds so much sway among so many sporting folk? Well, obviously, certainly, he's the, the, the highest-paid pundit, obviously, on TV. So has he, Is he has a he good man? Power? Pardon? Is he a good man? Um, I've, I've, I've only known, known him as a, an ex-footballer. Matt, Matt probably knows him more than I do, but <laughs> you know, he, seems a, he seems a gentleman. But, obviously, what he's, what he's come out with is obviously massively controversial to what's yeah. gone on now. All his mates have been loyal to him. You know, and that's that's fine. That's that. That's Alan Alan and Ian's opinion. Mm. But let, well, like Littis, I said earlier, the Littis, what do you what, what do you think it is, Littis? Is is he a good man, Lineker? Uh, it depends how how you want to define that. Um, I think he's probably done um, some good things in his life, um, but you know, like everybody, he's probably done some uh, rather bad things in his life. Uh, a lot of people who do those bad things, they get. Um, highlighted in the press. Um, Gary seems to have some influential friends in high places, uh, which manages to to keep those things out of the press um, a, a large majority of the time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious to me uh, what's going on. Um, and it shouldn't take a genius to work out so uh, a why, why everybody stands in solidarity with him. So there's been a conspiracy of silence amongst the mainstream media to protect Gary Lineker because they agree with his politics, effectively. Um, quite possibly. Quite possibly. OK. Absolutely fascinating stuff. Matt Letizia, Dean Windass, great debate. Thank you for being here. Uh, who do you agree with on this, though, after the corporation lets Gary Lineker back on air? Do you think they are impartial? Uh, from Eric on Twitter... Impartial and the BBC, two things that should never be seen in the same sentence ever today from Dolly. Yes, the BBC has tried to be. Lineker is not a newsreader nor a political reporter. He can say what he likes. And from Billy, no, it's time the BBC was defunded. Government ministers should bring legislation to implement this. Well, that I couldn't agree with you more on. And your verdict is now in. 9% of you say that the BBC is impartial. 91% of you agree with me and say that it's not. Coming up, as SNP leadership hopeful Humza Youssef vows to break up Britain by, quote, any means necessary, is the Scottish separatist campaign about to turn very nasty and very ugly? Our man in Stirling, Neil Oliver, live on that 
uh, very shortly. But first, broadcaster and leader of the Reclaim Party, Lawrence Fox, tackles the wokery of the week from Suala to Sadiq in the Fox Report. He's live straight after the short break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Dubes and Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. It's all about family. Being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Mondays to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. I campaigned in the largest democratic vote in our island story. I know this country has so much to be proud of. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. The wisdom of the nation is in its people. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. That's why I'm joining the People's Channel. Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Time now for the Fox Report with broadcaster and Reclaim Party leader Lawrence Fox and Home Secretary Suala Braverman has today ordered police to stop the, quote, Orwellian recording of the names of those accused of non-crime hate incidents. Now, this was after a 14-year-old autistic schoolboy's name was added to police records when he accidentally scuffed a copy of the Quran at Wakefield's Kettlethorpe High School. Now, Superwoman Suala slammed the police's response to the incident, insisting that, quote, people are perfectly entitled to say things about politics, gender and religion that others find offensive. Disagreement is not incitement and nor is irreverence or mockery, adding that British police investigations must never include politically correct distractions. So, Lawrence, look, you have been campaigning on this issue now uh, for a number of months. Do, do you think this is a sign that you're finally winning the battle against the politicised plod? 
Good evening, Dan. Um, yeah, look, it's a step in the right direction and we should all take our hats off to Harry Miller, actually, who put his life and livelihood and house on the line to fight Miller versus College of Policing over non-crime hate incidents. Um, yeah, it's a step in the right direction, but what's happening now, the police, instead of using non-crime hate incidents, is they're using criminal legislation. So they are actually doubling down. They will not give up on the woke agenda. They want to police your speech with every ounce of their being. That's what they're like. And when you think about this poor young lad, Lawrence, 14 years old, you know, does a silly stump with a Koran. I mean, the police should have nothing to do with it. The police should actually be going for the thugs that are threatening this young boy and his family. Absolutely. Uh, it's appalling. And anyone who's witnessed what happened with the Batley Grammar School teacher uh, yeah, yeah, realises yeah. that we do not live Just in a theocracy the in this country. We live in a liberal secular democracy, which means we tolerate, not respect, we tolerate all religions and none. And um, anyone that wants to establish a theocracy in this country should be roundly rebutted. And I think um, Suella Braveman has been very good on this issue. But, you know, politicians do talk. It's whether they walk as well. Now, look, uh, I want to talk about uh, probably my least favourite, from one of my favourites to my least favourite politician in the country, the failed London Mayor Sadiq Khan, uh, who has undoubtedly left the capital once the greatest city in the world, worse off, uh, with crime spiralling out of control. You know, you've got the public transport network running on empty, unpopular air pollution policies driving London's road users to despair. Next year, of course, we'll see a new mayor elected. And you, Lawrence, are keen to see an alternative Labour voice who will challenge Khan's campaign for a third spell in office. What can you tell us? Well, I, you know what, Dan? I think that the left generally have been ignored. You know, those that campaign against social inequality, who are looking for better unionisation and, and a fairer and better distribution of wealth. That's been hijacked by this man, Sadiq Khan, who would rather tweet about anything. But from the menopause to climate change, then he would tweet about the fact that his capital city is ground to a halt and he's overseeing the biggest, most exponential growth in crime that London has ever witnessed. So I think that someone like Jeremy Corbyn, a traditional leftist, well, not leftist, but left winger, should stand as London mayor against Sadiq Khan and give the people of London an actual left wing opportunity, which means that the right wing can sneak in our own candidate. <laughs> yes, split the vote. It is a good yeah. strategy. Uh, get them going for each other and then someone comes through the middle. I like it. Uh, I also have to ask you about this. The lefty government in Wales, which, again, I don't think gets enough uh, attention fr from the mainstream media, has given us another miserable glimpse into a future under a potential Keir Starmer administration, publishing official guidance that famous statues of, quote, old white men should be hidden or destroyed to create, quote, the right historical narrative. Welsh wokery warriors are concerned that some statues glorify powerful, older, able-bodied white men, which they worry is offensive to Wales' diverse population. Now, Lawrence, we've known for a while that able-bodied white men are a real threat uh, to the left. Uh, but let's call this out for what it is, right? State-sponsored racism. Absolutely what it is. Uh, if this sort of behaviour was aimed at any other ethnic group, uh, there would rightly and justifiably be outrage that um, such open and transparent racism was available. But it's also an argument to ditch this idea of devolution uh, and, and to stop the Welsh having the, a say on this stuff. This stuff should come, we're a united kingdom, our laws and our rules should come out the centre of government. Why do these people have parliaments? Sorry to be rude, but, you know, I, how dare you speak about white people in this way? It's, it's abject and vile racism and that's what it is and it should be called out by these little upper middle class white liberals who think that they can apologize for everything and and, and in some way sort of advance the cause of anti-racism which in itself is a complete travesty because the it, the ideology behind anti-racism is that the opposite of it is racism and therefore you've got to have someone you can be acceptably racist to which is white people and i'm sick of it and everything woke touches it destroys and we need to attack it with from all angles yeah, acceptable state-sanctioned racism in 2023. There is a lot to fight, isn't there, Lawrence Fox? And you'll continue to do it on your show Friday nights here on GB News.
But coming up in the media buzz, with the government's migration bill going through its second reading in Parliament as we speak, are Tory wets who seek to block it betraying Britain's borders? My superstar panel tackle this, plus we'll have the first of tomorrow's newspaper front pages straight after 10. But first, our man in Stirling, Neil Oliver, joins me live as support for Scottish independence drops to just 39%, forcing leadership hopeful Humza Youssef to make the sinister promise to achieve separatism by, quote, any means necessary. I'll tell you more straight after the break. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prison? I, I don't believe in prison. Please. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Clip that bit off. Well, you are. You, my, you, no. <laughs> my political ambitions are, those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes to have one. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like Absolutely. on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubery, weekday evenings at 6 o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, <laughs> right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. The great Neil Oliver is tonight's outsider. And at noon today, the polls open for SNP members to choose their new leader and the First Minister of Scotland to replace the scarpering scheming Sturgeon. Latest polling of the Scottish public has Kate Forbes whopping 15 points ahead of her nearest rival, useless Humza Yousaf, while the pair are neck and neck when it comes to the SNP membership who will decide. And in a last-ditch attempt to get the rabid separatist based on side, Humza used very inflammatory language on the BBC yesterday. To achieve independence, we will use any means necessary. That is within a legal framework, of course. But we are at a tipping point. We are at about 50%. We have to get it over 50% consistently. But useless, uh, useless, you... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at this. I just... <laughs> It's so good. Useless Yousaf, as you can tell, might want to check those numbers because a bombshell new YouGov poll has just 39% of Scots supporting independence. Now, 39%. Oh, goodness. I'm 
Just could watch that all day. Uh, now, Neil, look, on a serious note, while the candidates have set about destroying each other, have they actually destroyed their shared dream of Scottish separatism? Well, I've, I've said we've had this conversation or, 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 or versions of it before, Dan. The, the Scottish population has never been in majority in favour of breaking up the union. That, that's just a, that's a fact. Yeah. Um, but the, it's also an inevitability that whoever is in charge of the SNP, they have no option. They're trapped uh, in a hellish way <laughs> into always and only pushing for independence. They are a single-issue protest group, the Scottish National Party, uh, and they have to always push for uh, independence. That's it for them. They're trapped into it in a sort of Kafkaesque hell. Uh, you know, whether they whether they think there's any support for it or not, they have no option but to go there. Um, but yeah, that that there's another poll, and I, I don't know how much we I, I ever really put in these uh, these snap polls. But anyway, there you go. Thirty nine percent apparently uh, is as is as low as it's fallen at the moment. Mm. I've n I've never really felt that support for Scottish independence has been much above that, uh, apart from you know the the occasional freakish high water mark that comes along. But the whole thing, you know that that clip that you played of uh, of yeah. uh, of Hamza Yusuf's yeah by whatever by, means by, by, necessary. By, 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 That's yeah, shocking language, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it, the the thing, you know, Nicola Sturgeon, you have to you give the give the devil its due. You know, she had some game when it came to politics. Yeah. You know, not least uh, a survival instinct. She, you know, she she had she had an aptitude for protecting herself when she was in the in the spotlight of publicity. As you pointed out with that other clip, Hamza Yusuf can't even go a scooter. He, he doesn't have any of that natural survival instinct. And, you know, he's, the fact that he has declared that he's promoting himself as the continuity candidate, I find absolutely bizarre because Nicola's plan f to secure uh, Scottish separation didn't work when Nicola was in charge of it herself. Why on earth would it work with Hamza Youssef, who's a serial failure, uh, in charge of that plan? Uh, you know, bring bring on the day, honestly, when when Hamza Yusuf is is duly appointed first minister, uh, because it it means that the 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 prospects of the Scottish National Party uh, will just drift further and further into oblivion. You know, I I I, I genuinely look forward to with with relish. Uh, what the wider political community up here in Scotland and uh, in, in Westminster does with someone as hapless and inept right. as Hamza used to. I know it's going to be great. And doesn't this speak to a much wider point about what's going on in politics across the globe, Neil? Because, look, I agree with you, I don't ever believe any individual poll, but I do think you can look at the trends, and I think what the trends tell you is that uh, the Scottish population outside of the SNP would much prefer a sensible candidate like Kate Forbes. I don't think she's sensible on a lot of economic issues, but I'm talking about the social, the moral issues, the whole J.K. Rowling trans debate. Uh, they would much prefer someone like her than a continuity Sturgeon candidate. But the political establishment, the MSM, they don't give a damn. You know, they have decided that useless Yusuf is their man. Yes, it's it's bizarre. I think it's that continuation of that idea that my enemy's enemy is my friend. I, I think they instinctively perceive that Hamza Yusuf will continue to take the same stances as, as Nicola Sturgeon and that therefore will be an opponent to, to all of those uh, political uh, ideologies and, and ideas that, that the mainstream media are opposed to instinctively. And that continuity candidate in, in the form of Hamza Youssef is what they will want. Yeah, it would be, I think a lot of Scots would be much more interested to hear from Kate Forbes because she, she absolutely comes across as her own person. Uh, she comes across as having a, a very clearly defined uh, set of morals. She's got, you know, she's got traditional uh, ideas about a lot of things. She's a devout Christian. Now, that, it means that, you know, whatever, whether you're for that or against that, it, it, you know, you have a sense of what Kate Forbes is. You can you can see what she stands for, you know. Where someone like Hamza Youssef is much more, I would say, just in the line of of so many politicians who just say whatever it is they think will get them out of the the particular specific predicament that they're in. Well, of course, and, and, and we also... saw that we saw that with how he's tried to deal with this whole gay marriage debate because uh, the bloke is a practicing Muslim. He purposefully uh -oh. missed the vote. Uh, Kate Forbes yes. has been honest and says 
because of my religious beliefs, I did not back gay marriage. I will not back gay marriage, although I'm not going to try and force my religion down your throat. Youssef does what lying politicians do and tries to fudge the issue. And I think it speaks to the huge difference between the two candidates. Yes, you just, as I say, that it is that idea that you at least know what Kate Forbes stands for. Yeah, and she's honest and about because it. She, and, and she says things that she knows uh, will be controversial and, and will fly in the face of what a lot of people think. But at least she's got the strength of her convictions and she's prepared to say what she honestly thinks and then she'll, she'll take the you know she'll get involved in the debate in that way but someone like Hamza Youssef will just just waits to see what way the yeah. wind is blowing yeah but he's, and, he's and goes with that. but he's protected in a way I, I agree with that Neil but he's protected in a way isn't he because the mainstream media are very happy to attack Christianity and yeah. Christians oh, yes. in politics but they're not happy to attack uh, a Muslim it, in politics it, 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 it's absolutely bizarre because when you get right down to it, you know, uh, Christians, Muslims and Jews are all people of the book. They, they all draw their, their fundamentals, if you like, from you know, from the Old Testament. That's that's just yeah. a fact. And But the only person who's being held to account, who's being held up to that standard uh, and being beaten with the stick is Kate Forbes. It's, yeah. it's bizarre. It's bizarre. But I think the fundamental thing that we haven't actually touched on yet Dan, is that the way the world is at the moment, what we've gone through in the last couple of years and what we're obviously looking down the barrel of economically and all the rest of it, there's so much change and, and upheaval and disruption either with us or coming that the last thing people want and, and the Scottish people want is the kind of disruption that would be promised absolutely undoubtedly by more talk of referendum and all the rest of it. People want to get on with their lives. They want someone that's going to run the country effectively and stop just banging the drum of independence and separation. That ship has sailed. Here, here, Neil Oliver. Uh, it was a brilliant monologue, by the way, uh, at the weekend. So I recommend everyone well, thanks, check it out on YouTube. Neil Oliver, thank you so much. Brilliant movie comparisons. You'll you'll know what I mean when you view it. Uh, but still to come, as Meghan Markle considers becoming an agony aunt on her wellness blog, The Tig, days after bestowing prince and princess titles on their children, despite despising the monarchy. Are they just desperately trying now to keep the Sussex brand relevant? Star Telegraph columnist Celia Walden delivers her scathing verdict soon. But next in the media buzz with Suella Braverman's illegal migration bill being debated in Parliament tonight, are Tory wets who wish to block the essential legislation wrong to oppose it? My superstar panel have their sound this. Plus, we're going to have the first newspaper front pages hot off the press. We're back in just two minutes' time. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are. We don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? Rooms, apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? No, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. I campaigned in the largest democratic vote in our island story. I know this country has so much to be proud of. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. The wisdom of the nation is in its people. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. That's why I'm joining the People's Channel. Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays 
on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. It's 10 p.m. I'm Dan Wotton. Tonight, I've said it all along, a lefty broadcaster doesn't change its spots, as today the BBC gave in to Gary Lineker and woke mob rule. But after Sharer, Wright and all the other so-called pundits go on strike over the weekend, should Lineker's merry band of multi-millionaire virtue signalers all be given the boot? Fleet Street icon Calvin McKenzie speaks out for football fans let down by the Liberal elites. He's uncancelled later. Plus, while Lineker stands by his egregious Nazi jibe, the government is expected to win tonight's vote on the illegal migration bill. But are wet Tories like Caroline Noakes and George Osborne wrong to oppose the party's efforts to curb the invasion via the channel? Well, that's the big debate with my superstar panel next. And tonight, here they are. I'm joined by Carol Malone, Benjamin Butterworth and Belinda De Lucy. <laughs> With plans to relaunch her wellness and lifestyle blog, The Tig, Meghan Markle is set to become the world's worst agony aunt. So, as she asserts her children's right to be called prince and princess, is the Duchess of Delusion becoming all too aware of her dwindling relevance? Well, the Daily Telegraph star columnist Celia Walden gives an unflinching take on that very shortly. Then in the media buzz, as schools in Labour-run Wales teach children sex education using gender-fluid muffins, should the left be stopped from pushing their dangerous gender ideology on our young folk? And at last night's Oscars, it's four weddings and a funeral for this interviewer's career. What are you wearing tonight, then? Uh, just my suit. Your suit? Who yeah. made your suit? You didn't make it. Um, I can't remember. My tailor. That's OK. Yeah. Ta shout out to the tailor. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring you more of hashtag be kind to you, Grant, and the rest of the Oscars woke lowlights soon. And as ever, brand new, Greatest Britain and Union Jackass named before the night is out. So do stay up with us. We're going to have the first front pages in mere moments too, right after Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you, and good evening to you. The top story from the GB newsroom tonight, British firm Rolls-Royce will help build a new fleet of nuclear-powered submarines as part of a new pact between the UK, Australia and the United States to bolster defences and create thousands of jobs. The Prime Minister, his Australian counterpart, Anthony Albanese, and US President Joe Biden met in San Diego, California, to announce the next stage of the so-called AUKUS programme. It was signed by the three nations in 2021 to boost defences and counter China's threat in the Indo-Pacific region. And it comes as Number 10 announced today defence spending will rise by almost £5 billion over two years. Rishi Sunak has called the trilateral AUKUS submarine deal the most significant multilateral defence partnership in generations. The UK comes to this with over 60 years' experience of running our own fleet. We'll provide the world-leading design and build the first of these new boats, creating thousands of good, well-paid jobs in places like Barrow and Derby. And we will share our knowledge and experience with Australian engineers so they can build their own fleet. Now, our partnership is significant because not just are we building these submarines together, they will also be truly interoperable. Now, the government's illegal migration bill is still being debated in the House of Commons tonight. The legislation proposes the removal of channel migrants from the UK. That second reading should be being voted on about now. We'll bring you an update on the outcome of that vote just as soon as we've got it. Now, as you've been hearing, the television presenter Gary Lineker has been reinstated to Match of the Day presenting after reaching an agreement with the BBC today. That's after he was taken off air over a tweet on the government's illegal migration bill. The BBC Director General has apologised and said the corporation is launching an independent review of its social media guidelines. The board has welcomed the move as well, saying impartiality is a cornerstone of the BBC. And speaking to the BBC, Director General Tim Davies said he took proportionate action. Now, Dick Fosbury, who revolutionised the high jump in athletics, has died at the age of 76. His agent said he passed away peacefully in his sleep early Sunday morning following a battle with lymphoma. 
Fosbury used his new technique to win the gold medal at the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City and has been copied by thousands upon thousands since. King Charles and other members of the royal family attended a service celebrating Commonwealth Day today at Westminster Abbey. The King focused his speech on the theme of forging a sustainable and peaceful common future. King Charles said a commitment to peace, progress and opportunity would sustain the Commonwealth. That's all from the GB Newsroom. We're back in an hour. Now more from Dan. All right, straight after 10, so it's tomorrow's news tonight now on our Media Buzz. And you know, I've got the first front pages here. Let's get straight to them. The Metro, time for a sharp exit. Uh, leading on calls for the BBC chairman Richard Sharp to quit in the wake of the Linacre fiasco after being accused of going missing in action amid the row. The eye also guns for Richard Sharp. Oh, yeah, I can see what's going on here. And the director general, Tim Davey, as it reports, pressure is growing on the pair to step down. But, of course, Lineker, they all want him to remain in post. Uh, the lefty independent mockingly leads with Lineker 3, BBC nil, as it highlights the BBC's capitulation in its row with the Match of the Day host. It reads, he gets job back, he makes no apology, he immediately tweets again about small boats. Yes, that's all happened. Uh, and the folk at the Independent might think that's a good thing. I think it actually uh, is the signing of the death warrant long term for the BBC. And the Daily Star takes a similar tax smashing with one nil to the crisps salesman. My superstar panel back with me now, broadcaster and Daily Express columnist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper Benjamin Butterworth and the former Brexit Party MEP and political commentator Belinda DeLucy. Now, as we just saw on those front pages, Gary Lineker, he's going to be back on air this weekend despite disgracefully comparing the government's proposed migrant legislation to that of Nazi Germany. And oh so predictably, Tory wets, including Caroline Noakes and Chris Skidmore, have rushed to join the BBC's chief lefty in opposing the crucial migrant bill, which is going through its second reading in Parliament as we speak. And I never want to bow to pressure from the back bench as though superwoman Suala Braverman hit back today in typically spirited style. I am subject to the most grotesque slurs for saying such simple truths about the impact of unlimited and illegal migration. I will not be hectored by out of touch lefties or anyone for that matter. I won't be patronised, I won't be patronised on what appropriate views for someone of my background can hold. And I will not back down when faced with spurious accusations of bigotry. Here, here. Now, not everyone seems to have been listening, though, with uh, the former Green Party leader, Caroline Lucas, proving just how out of touch those lefties really are with this pathetic piece of pantomime. The Secretary, on the face of this bill, invites Parliament to rip up international law. The only act of a Parliament that is, has some kind of moral integrity is to rip up her illegal and immoral bill, which has no place on our statute book. I mean, Carol Malone, what a piece of uh, political theatre there. You know, but Braverman is right, isn't she? Braverman How is dare anyone completely. say to someone like her, given her background, yeah. uh, that she's wrong to try and protect our borders, to try and protect life, to try and protect our economy, to try and protect our communities, our cities? I'm glad people like Caroline Noakes and, and, and the other guy have come, out and, have come out and said um, that they're going to vote against them. Because I think we ought to know the people who are against illegal... who are against... Sorry, for illegal immigration and against this government stopping it. I think we should know the people who are supporting the scammers and the criminals who are coming over here and taking advantage of the good people of this country. And, you know, Labour, who are doing all of this right now, and it's good that we know who they are too, because, you know, Labour have, again, wrong-footed. They're on the wrong side of, of the country. There's a, there was a shock poll out this weekend that said Labour's lead against the Tories has halved from 22% to 11%. 
10%. Why? Because of this. Because seven out of ten of the Red Wall communities are for mm. Rishi's plans. They agree with them. And, you know, Caroline Noakes says... These are the live pictures, by the way. The vote's about to take place. Ah, good. Do you want me to shut up while it's happening? No, 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 no. You can keep going. <laughs> 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 you just want me to shut up generally. But Caroline Noakes says these laws are inhumane. It is not inhumane to stop scammers from holiday destinations coming, like Albania, coming to this country and pretending that they're modern No, it's the humane place. thing to do for all involved. Uh, but Benjamin, Suala Braverman, uh, talking about being hectored by out-of-touch lefties. Uh, is she talking about my experience every Monday night? <laughs> yeah. Oh, desperate, Dan. <laughs> you know, I mean, I actually dislike quite a lot that she acts like so many Tory politicians at the moment, that she talks about herself and about drama and about headlines rather than the actual problems. And the truth is that the plan to deny access to the Modern Slavery Act, which Theresa May, a Tory Prime Minister, brought in only a couple of years ago, the only people who are helped by that are the traffickers, not the victims. They will Rubbish. show it to those vulnerable Rubbish. people who have got on boats to come to this country, and they will say, Rubbish. don't bother Be asking Rubbish, for help. Benjamin, you the, won't. The, the Sun newspaper actually uh, went to one of uh, the camps in Calais after the announcement of the bill, and they immediately found a, a bloke from Afghanistan who was safely in France, uh, was doing a deal with a people smuggler at that moment uh, to get on a boat, a small boat across the Channel, on hearing the news that this would deny him an opportunity to ever apply for British citizenship again, immediately said, you know what, I'm going to stay in France. And that is why this bill, in the end, will work. Right, Belinda de Lucy? Uh, well, I, I hope so. But I think it's a really good sign that Caroline Noakes is yep. not going to vote for this. It's a great sign that she doesn't think it's it's good for her cause because she is the most anti-Tory Tory, the most woke, in fact, we should call her Caroline Wokes. She has been detached <laughs> That's good. from... Thank you very much. Detached from reality yeah. for years. She's a massive yeah. champion of self-ID. She has mm. always been on the very liberal progressive yeah, exactly. side of the Tory party. And she's, same with George Osborne. She's going to do another Osborne. 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 Osborne.
an unkind and intolerant thing to say. Oh, what, to deport kind. Albanians? Not to Are deport Albanians. I, I don't it's think a holiday any, destination. I don't think, I don't think... Well, Albania isn't I've been. Well, it is. But it is a holiday I destination. I don't think that we should be taking Albanians. I think that's clearly... OK, we're just going to go to the reading of the vote oh. now. Uh, I do have the results. Thank you. The eyes to the right, 249. The nose to the left, 312. So the nose have it, the nose have it. Unlock. The question is that the bill be now read a second time. As many as are of that opinion say aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. No. Clear the lobby. So there you go. Now, uh, we're going to move on because this afternoon at Westminster Abbey, King Charles attended his first Commonwealth service as the new monarch three years after the same event was marred by the announcement of Megxit. It was sure to be an emotional day for the royal family as they arrived to hear the first Commonwealth Day address since the death of Her Late Majesty the Queen. However, it heralded a new dawn as the King unveiled his new look, trimmed down royal family with Prince Edward making his first appearance, I'm delighted about this by the way, as Duke of Edinburgh since being awarded that title last week on his birthday. Here's part of the King's historic address. In succeeding Her Majesty as head of the Commonwealth, I draw great strength from her example, together with all that I have learnt from the extraordinary people I have met throughout the Commonwealth over so many years. But naturally, the woke mob had to have their say and they're allowed to do it, of course. I believe in freedom of speech. They probably should get a haircut and get a real job, though. They're the anti-monarchy protests, of course, gathering, holding up, not my king signs. It is a scene, though, uh, that would never have taken place under the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. So it is a reminder of the challenges facing the firm in the modern day. Belinda de Lucy, Benjamin Butterworth, Carol Malone do stand by because coming up with Welsh teachers given a sex education resource claiming there are 100 genders. Is this the latest example of Labour's push for an extreme sort of ideology when it comes to sex education? My superstar panel are going to return to have their say on that. Plus, we'll have more of tomorrow's newspaper front pages in just a moment. But first, as it's reported, Meghan Markle wants to become an online agony aunt. The Daily Telegraph star columnist Celia Walden tells me why no one should be taking advice from the Duchess of Delusion. Celia Walden live, so don't go anywhere. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even some ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel.
Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Co. Right, you're uh, an inspiration to us all. Clip that bit off. Well, you are. You, 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 no. My political ambitions are, those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes. Now. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like Absolutely. on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubery, weekday evenings at 6 o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> on it today! I, 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 I... Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Welcome back. And uh, just to clarify that the vote result you saw before the break was actually Labour's amendment seeking to block the illegal migration bill being defeated by 249 votes to 312, a majority of 63. Uh, I was a little bit confused about exactly what vote was taking place this, so I didn't want to comment until uh, I was able to clarify that. So the main vote still coming very soon. Now, as if the world hasn't heard enough from Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex is reportedly set to relaunch her wellness and lifestyle blog, The Tig. The website was closed in 2017 when she became engaged to Prince Harry, but according to the Daily Mirror, it could go live again as soon as next week. And in a devastating fall from grace, Meghan could also become a kind of agony aunt after filing papers with the US Trademark and Patent Office that her site would dole out, quote, commentary in the field of personal relationships. I mean, because she's clearly an oracle, right, on how to get along with friends and family members. Uh, yeah. Now, this bizarre new scheme from the Sussexes follows confirmation that their kids will be known as Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, which they say is their birthright. And I'm delighted to be joined now by the Daily Telegraph star columnist Celia Walden. And Celia, you've written on this tomorrow. Uh, because you say no one wants lifestyle advice from someone as mucked up as Meghan. Well, it just seems a sort of farcical turn of events that you would <laughs> that anyone would approach this particular woman for advice on how to maintain <laughs> healthy relationships. I mean, you couldn't make it up. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but what is, and you do have to take your hat off to her sometimes because it's this awe-inspiring self-belief that she has um, that is completely uncluttered by anything that has sort of actually gone on or that she's previously said or any sense of hypocrisy. Um, we, and it must be great to be able to just, just carry on with life and, and ignore everything you've said in the past um, uh, in, in this baffling way. I mean... She is now so confused, I think, isn't she? That they've, they've both entangled themselves in this web of distortions and lies. They don't actually know where they stand on anything because I thought they'd just spent the past two years telling us how awful the monarchy was, how it's this completely damaged institution. Why on earth, especially, by the way, if you're wanting to become an agony aunt, why on earth would you want to thrust your children into the center of it, especially, by the way, given that growing up in California, it's bizarre. It's bizarre, but it also, there is a logic there, isn't there? I mean, let's be honest, which is that the money. Uh, there's that and there's all those, which, how, whatever you want to call it, staying relevant. Yeah, um, exactly. And to make money, they have to stay relevant. And they've realized that staying relevant is about a proximity to the royal family. Of course. And in the same way, um, you know, the Duke and Duchess titles, they desperately, desperately wanted to cling on to. Why? You know, if you if you hate it that much, if it's a world of pain, if you're triggered by the sort of merest mention of anything royal, um, why on earth do you desperately want to cling to those titles? And we know why. And particularly now, when, of course, they've just had this devastating 
um, poll come out uh, in Newsweek mm. showing how far they've dropped in the popularity polls since um, Spare was published. Um, and all of these things, it's just been one error after another, hasn't it? Um, and mm -hmm. we always mm -hmm. assumed that America loved them, but it, they, they really, really don't. They've, in fact, now they've just become a figure of fun. And when you become a figure of fun, there's a problem, isn't there? Because, uh, you know, they're, they're now... They're now apparently beneath Prince Andrew in a, in in terms of popularity ratings, um, which it's uh, an it's extraordinary fall from grace, isn't it? But I have to be honest, I don't feel sorry for them at all because this has been of their own making. But I feel embarrassed for them now because they are a laughing stock in America. That they are now a, a butt of jokes from South Park to Chris Rock, and I can completely understand why Americans are saying, "Hold on a moment." You said you were coming over here to get away from the horrible royal family, to reclaim your privacy, and now you are insisting that your two young children not only become a prince and a princess, which, by the way, King Charles clearly didn't want to do. You know, he hadn't even updated the website because he clearly was hoping that they would say, no, we don't want this. And now they want these two kids, uh, according to reports, invited to the coronation. I mean, they're not even five years old. I know, but that again is they desperately need, don't they? Because you know, I mean, she needs it for the talk shows moving forward, um, and uh, and and they've all, she's managed to sort of lose the celebrity, um, the celebrity entourage that she desperately wanted from the beginning. Um, because I think if there's one thing that A-listers don't do, it's it's uh, air all their dirty laundry. So I think that has put them. Um, it, so it means they're neither royalty now nor part of the A-list, um, who've, who've perceived the way they've behaved as sort of all slightly mucky and, and confusing, um, <laughs> which, to be honest, it is. Uh, so they're in this slightly no, no man's yeah. land, and perhaps that's why the TIG is being uh, brought back uh, and resurrected oh, in the home. It will be awful. It will be absolutely woeful and awful. My advice to Meghan Markle is if you have any sense, do not bring back the TIG. But we know she doesn't have any sense. Um, Silly, is it right that you recently sat down with Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, for, for The Telegraph? Uh, because I, 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 I have been hearing quite a lot of reaction to the interview saying that actually Meghan could learn some lessons from Fergie in terms of how to navigate America and navigate this new role. From having sat down with her, do, do you think there's a logic to that argument? I do agree with that because I think actually, if you think about it, um, Fergie was a, a trailblazer in so many ways because she's always been sort of defiantly herself, hasn't she? From the yes. wedding dress war to the to the way they navigated their divorce all of it she was a bit she was a trailblazer um and uh, but where she's held back is she has she's never she's never whinged yeah. uh, and she has very very good reason to whinge i mean you'll remember some of the headlines about mm -hmm. her um duchess uh, of pork uh, yeah duchess Not of pork nice. and how many people would rather yeah. sleep with a goat than with fergie you know i mean yeah. it, it didn't get much worse than that no. i like to think We've we've gone <laughs> we've moved up a bit since then, but but um but she doesn't whinge and she's actually an incredibly kind of positive person, um and she wouldn't even say anything bad about Meghan when I asked her she really really wouldn't she said no. she thought Diana would love her um and yeah. uh, and refused to comment so um so it, in her own way she can be very diplomatic too well indeed but the problem is uh. That, that, that they've gone down this path now of attacking the royal family. And you're right, I think Fergie made a lot of mistakes. The one thing she never did was attack the royal family, was attack the institution of the monarchy, and especially the Queen, the late Queen, and Prince Philip. She, she never attacked them. And, you know, Philip hated her. But she understood that there was a reason uh, to, to keep the respectability of the monarchy out there. The Queen, the queen obviously actually adored her because yeah, yeah, she yeah. left her... So, you know, you yeah. don't leave your precious corgis to anyone. No, indeed. Indeed. Celia Warden, you're brilliant. I cannot wait to read your column in the Daily Telegraph tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here tonight. But coming up in Uncancelled, Fleet Street legend Calvin McKenzie live in the studio as he takes down the millionaire strikers who abandoned football fans at the weekend in support of Gary Lineker. But first, in the media buzz with Welsh teachers educating children about mixed berry gender fluid muffins. Is this just another example of Labour's pushed for warped gender ideology? Back with that and more of tomorrow's newspaper front pages straight after the break.
I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. I campaigned in the largest democratic vote in our island story. I know this country has so much to be proud of. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. The wisdom of the nation is in its people. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. That's why I'm joining the People's Channel. Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. Uh, breaking tonight, good news. The government's illegal migration bill has just passed its second reading in the Commons. The vote won by 312 to 250. So it's on the way. Uh, but let's return to tomorrow's news site now in the Media Buzz. Uh, lots of front pages are now The Sun. Uh, leads with an exclusive on shame paedophile Gary Glitter, who is back in prison tonight, just days after being released halfway through a 16-year sentence in Dorset. The paper revealed yesterday how Glitter had been surfing the net on a smartphone at his bail hostel and discussing how to use the anonymous dark web. Cops re-arrested him this morning after The Sun broke that story. The Daily Telegraph reports that Chancellor Jeremy Hunt is preparing to boost the tax-free allowance for pensions by more than half a million pounds as he battles the early wave of sorry the wave of early retirements. The Daily Express asks if Gary Lineker has put a nail in the coffin of the licence fee, and I say absolutely. The Daily Mail rightly calls the Beeb's capitulation a slap in the face for licence fee payers. They accused Tim Davey of caving in to Lineker and quote former Director General Greg Dyke, who says Lineker has beaten the BBC 5-0. Meanwhile, The Guardian leads with calls for BBC Chairman Richard Sharp to step down. You'll see this is something uh, that is now an argument the mainstream media are coalescing around. And I'm expecting to hear much more of that over the next few days. We're going to return to the Superstar panel now. Top Daily Express columnist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper Benjamin Butterworth and the former Brexit Party MEP Belinda De Lucy. 
Now, last week, the government pledged an urgent review into sex education after it was railed school children are being taught about hardcore sex, including how to choke their partners in class. More worrying details have now emerged from Wales, where the Labour-run school curriculum indoctrinates children as young as seven about how they might identify as a, quote, mixed berry gender fluid muffin. Now, the bizarre reference aims to teach youngsters how they, quote, can't assume someone's gender by how they look. Teachers are also urged to play a game with kids that, quote, decides which sex-switching or gender-bending worlds pupils want to explore. Welsh First Minister Mark Drakeford and his Labour cohorts have been slammed for dishing out the 170-page agenda pamphlet to confuse kids. And although they deny commissioning it, it clearly comes emblazoned with the Welsh Government logo. So it seems like this is the kind of warped education our kids can expect under a Labour government and is a cause of concern. But Benjamin Butterworth, uh, you believe there's over 100 genders, don't you? Well, I think that these are just words that are used... For, but that people can use to explain how they feel and how the rest of the world can perceive them. So I, so is I don't it possible think you go around banning words? No. So, so is it possible to identify as a mixed berry gender fluid muffin? Well, you know full well that that's not what this pamphlet or this advice says. It uses a muffin of which it says a blueberry muffin could be a different colour on the inside to illustrate that how someone might look might be different to who they are and how they feel. It doesn't what say... Are some of the other... It does not say they can identify What, what are some muffin. of the other 100 genders? Can you <laughs> take me through Can some? I tell you one? Well, there's... <laughs> there's one called an astrogender, which means you have an affinity with the moon and the stars. There's another one called a spirit essence. I don't even understand the explanation of that. There's one called intersex. I mean, this is just nonsense. There is I mean, no in intersex, evidence -based Intersex fact is widely recognised and has been for many by, decades. By you, maybe, but, but what is, what is <laughs> C-I-S-H-E-T? Intersex is a biological what is, description. What is cis-het? What's C -I -S -H -E -T. That means, well, that would mean that you're, you were born a woman and you are a woman. So do you, so do you think we should be teaching seven-year-old kids this? You know, the BBC recently had to withdraw a video from its Teach website, which had teachers talking to kids about this. These confused little children who didn't know what the hell was going on. And after a tsunami of complaints from parents, literally, who, who said that their kids were being taught this but gender this, ideology no. against their will, the BBC had to withdraw this. The, this is outrageous. It, it's a nonsense to say that children are being indoctrinated are. into it. They just are, because they Who know, says there's 100 genders? Just because, the, the just because a child knows that transgender or gay people exist doesn't no, mean no, that but, they're going to become but, a transgender no, 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 but we're no, talking no, about there being over 100 genders, though. No, but you're suggesting that they will become this because they know this exists. I learned about World War II in school, and I've yet to invade can I, Poland. OK, can I just talk about the Tavistock Clinic, then, which was closed down? Well, it's a separate issue. No, it's not a separate issue. Young, impressionable teenagers, vulnerable mm. teenagers, much older than the age of seven, went there for help and advice, mm. and they were many of them ended up taking life-changing mm. drugs, and many of them now are trying to detransition because they were given the wrong yeah. advice. Those These People need to take... people. You don't believe they... that this is putting ideas into young people's heads? Because no. if you're told, look, you can identify as a berry muffin, maybe you think, well, maybe I will. Whereas, actually, when I was growing up, you were either a boy or a girl, and then if you were trans, that was dealt with in a uh, proper way, but it was viewed as something that was actually a medical condition, the I... not just a fad, the idea... not just something I might want to be when I wake up in the morning well, one day. Again, this, none of this says you can be a berry muffin. You're just making that up. But the idea it puts in kids' heads is that they can be who they truly Truly are, and they should be accepted and you welcomed are putting and kids, treated appropriately no, you're for being kids themselves. Into the middle of a cultural but and Lucy, battle. Belinda Lucy, no, you, you're, so, no, you're, you talk about life-changing drugs. These kids take their lives if they don't. Oh, do this, this, don't this, this is this is the right old, this is the tired old excuse that people like you use what, that kids to kill themselves because, because they're bullied. As a society, we are being emotionally blackmailed by trans actors. Trans no, they're schools, being emotionally blackmailed by institutions are, including the BBC and including Wales. This is our. Well, you, the thing is, you, you use turf as a put down, and I've reclaimed yeah, trans the word. Exclusionary radical it's feminism. And I think that's a great thing to be. It, I think it's a really great thing well, to be. You, you, uh, you might take pride in your bigotry. No, no, but I, I don't. But, but I just Belinda, believe in single sex spaces. Belinda, whoever you, doesn't puts women at danger. Belinda, from a political point of view, uh, you say that Wales is going to be the blueprint of how this country would be governed yeah. under a Keir Starmer it's administration. Their gender ideology is faith based. There's no scientific evidence behind exactly. it. And it's being taught to children unchallenged. Why does Labour hate childhood so much? 
Why can't they leave children alone to go and play? Benjamin's the laughing games? at you there. No, these are adult themes that lead to sterilization and butchery of teenage bodies. This is not a safe path, the path for children. There are lots of things children experiment with. Often teenagers don't like their bodies. They want yeah. to, you know, they're, they're mentally vulnerable. One in six children between the age of five and 15 have yeah. a mental illness yeah. now, and it's because adults mm. keep taking the framework yeah. away I mean, from children. I mean, children. Benjamin, I don't think you really believe there are 100 genders, do you? <laughs> well, Because you haven't answered the question <laughs> direct. I've asked you well, multiple times. It's fantasy. About, but, you know, because the number is kind of meaningless. The point is... Oh, because you the... don't believe there are 100 so, genders. So, so, well, well, the point is that these are ways in which people describe themselves to the world. Well, why won't you That's just answer the, the basic question? Because this, this pamphlet being handed about the Welsh Government says there's over 100 genders. Are there over 100 genders or not? Well, I think these are different words to describe. <laughs> oh, it's a, OK, so you won't answer error, the question. Where is why, the evidence? Why, why won't you answer the question? Where is the evidence there's 100 genders and who says there is? Do you know what? Other people don't need to prove to you who oh, they were born to be. So you can't answer the question. No, 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 You sit there, there, you sit there and you lecture about Who's freedom decided? of speech and freedom in society. Oh, here we go. And yet so, you say that if these people don't make, meet your expectations, your so, narrow-minded so, expectations of who they should be, then they shouldn't be respected. They can be an astro-gender. They can have an affinity with the movie. Or they can be in. Sex, which that's, is a widely recognised scientific term. Mother, okay, final word to Belinda. Right. Final word to Belinda. Is rife with mothers Abuse of me. Having, having massive concerns <laughs> over this. It is parent-based. I've got children. There's no, and this is why they have to be so secret about it. They don't let the parents know they're teaching their exactly. children this, and there's a reason for it because it is unhealthy and it is bad for the children. It is bad and, for child. And, and, and parents shouldn't be told if their kid comes out at school because some oh, parents oh will God. be abusive to them, I mean, and those kids ha should have a safe them. space By the way, in their the school place. Government has, be, has urged schools to exercise caution mm. when they're talking about gender yeah. ideology and schools are not no doing such that. thing as gender ideology. OK, now yes, finally, the Oscars made a big return over the weekend to prove it's still the massive woke circus. It's always <laughs> been. You knew that, though. Uh, but in a break from the usual lovely red carpet interviews, Hugh Grant took a break from playing the same character for the 100th time over to give <laughs> an obnoxious but must-watch interview to the plus-size model Ashley Graham. What's your favourite thing about coming to the Oscars? Um, well, uh, <laughs> it's fascinating. It's, uh, it's uh, the, the whole of humanity is here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Vanity Fair. Oh, it's all about Vanity yeah. Fair. Yes, that's where we let loose and have a little bit of fun. Um, what are you most excited to see tonight? To see? Yeah, well, I know that you probably watched a few of the movies. Are you excited to see anybody win? Do you have your hopes up for anyone? Um, not, not, no, no one in particular. Okay, well, what are you wearing tonight then? Uh, just my suit. Your suit? Who yeah. made your suit? You didn't make it. Um, I can't remember my tailor. That's okay. Yeah. Ta shout out to the tailor. Yeah. Um, so tell me, what does it feel like to be in Glass Onion? It was such an amazing film. I really loved it. I love a thriller. How fun is it to shoot something like that? Well, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for about three seconds. Yeah, but yeah. still, you showed up and you had fun, right? Uh, almost. <laughs> OK, all yeah. right. <laughs> OK, well, thank you so much. It was nice to talk to you. Yeah. All right, back to you guys. Oh, make it stop. I mean, look, OK. She certainly wasn't hired for a quick wit uh, or brains, yeah. but Grant oh. is the meanest man in Hollywood. Let me put that on the record. Meanwhile, actress Jessica Chastain proved most virtuous by being the only person to wear a mucky face mask. She was quickly ribbed online when she was filmed taking off the muzzle to speak to the host, Jimmy Kimmel. Congratulations. Next question is for... Oh, Jessica Chastain. Where is Jessica? Jessica, hi, Jessica. This question... Uh, there's no name on this one. It says, Jessica, was it difficult filming... This question... Uh... <laughs> filming your movie, The Martian... Fury 18. That is Hollywood theatre in its purest form, right there. Belinda Lucy, Benjamin Butterworth, Carol Malone, do stand by because coming up, the so-called impartial BBC is dividing opinion tonight as I crown today's greatest Britain and Union Jackass. Surely Linux has got to be in the running, surely. But next, in Uncancelled after Shera Wright and all the other so-called pundits refuse to show up to work over the weekend, should Lineker's merry band of virtue signalers all be given the boot? Calvin McKenzie thinks so. He's going to join me in the studio live to reveal why in just a moment.
First and foremost, I am a GB News fan and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, <laughs> right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Now Gary Lineker said he is delighted to return to presenting Match of the Day after the woke workers at the Beeb went on strike at the weekend, leaving football fans with limited coverage. So-called pundits and full-time virtue singers Alan Shearer, Ian Wright, Jermaine Janus and Alex Scott led the walkout, forming a laughable picket line of multi-millionaire moaners. But a very few defied the BBC's woke mob rule as Five Live presenters Ian Dennis, Alistair Bruce Ball and John Murray showed up to do their jobs paid for, let's remember, by us, the British taxpayer. So, Calvin, should Tim Davey uh, actually sack the folk who refused to turn up to work uh, rather than turn them all into political martyrs like he has done? It's a very good idea. The minute he does it, of course... Lineker will pay back them walking out on strike, mm. and so then they'll be back to square one again. So he's lost control. Uh, Tim Davies has completely lost control, and the issue is Tim Davies is going to have to go. He got this completely wrong. Why he hadn't done his homework, hadn't looked at the contractual positions of everybody, hadn't had a good lawyer look at them beforehand. He said, out you go, and then legs it himself to the United States. You tell me a major manager in a massive crisis is, wants to be out of the country. The guy is absolutely hopeless. Unfortunately, Lineker has wiped the floor with the BBC management. They He's will be... played them. Huh? He's played them. He's gamed them. Because the, 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 the thing is, Calvin, is that Tim Davey, when he took the job, said that he was putting impartiality at the heart of his mission to reform the BBC. Well, that's out the window now. That's out the window because this review, it's got an assured result. The assured result is it's going to water down the impartiality provisions. Well, I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I certainly hope you're, you're not right. But what is clear is that nobody is now running... We give £159 each. It's got, got revenues of three and a half billion quid, all our money. If this is how it's run in the little bit that we do see, what else is going on all the time, which is completely... So, the BBC... So, why don't we do what makes sense? Why don't we go to subscription? Because if yeah, we go to subscription, then you can decide whether you mind the fact that um, uh, Lineker has these views. It doesn't matter to you. At the moment, I am forced to do it or I go to jail. Therefore, I do mind what is said through BBC fame. And the other issue, surely for Lineker's sake, he can go off 
and go and he can go and work for a load of other people. Why doesn't he do that and actually do the BBC a favour? There is no doubt. I listen to the BBC radio quite a lot, so I listen to the Today programme. I've listened to it for 40 years. It is more impartial today. Yeah, poor me. Well, actually, a lot of people feel that, but not necessarily about the BBC. I, I, it is more impartial today than it has ever been. So he is having an effect. These guys, because they're sport, they think they can go like that to the public. They can't. There will be ramifications for this, and I think Shearer, Wright, and the rest of them should all move on. And well, the if, people we say it's more just... impartial than it's ever been. They still, they still had a hard left Brit turned American presenter on this morning describing Donald Trump as insane with no pushback uh, from Michelle Hussein it, during the interview. So I know what you're saying, that they're making an effort, but fundamentally what we've learned over the weekend, yeah. Calvin Wright, is that all of these folk think the same. They're all part of the same uh, North London champagne socialist set. They have disdain for any folk who believe that actually open borders is not sustainable for a country it, it, like the It's UK. certainly true. Uh, to give the credit to Suella Braverman, who has, who has done some stunning stuff over the last yep. week, and there are big issues coming down the track, I suspect, from a Hindu home secretary with a Muslim agitated mm. crowd out there. So we're going to see more Kettlethorpe High yeah. in Wakefield coming out at, at us. But all she was powerful in the House tonight. She was powerful tonight, a brilliant speech tonight, a great piece in The Times today, mm. and laying down a change. Now, the, you're right, you're not going to hear a lot of the Braverman position are on the radio, but you can hear it somewhere else. You mm. can hear it here. Yeah. You can yeah. hear it and, on GB exactly. News Radio. And, and, and by the way, I am... I think I've been absolutely infuri infuriated over the past two weeks with this fig leaf argument that's been going around that this is somehow an issue of freedom of speech. Nothing, it's to, nothing do to do with that. He signed a contract, Calvin, yeah. and he knew that by right. signing that contract, he was taking £1.3 million pounds from us. Yeah. Part of that £1.3 million pounds yeah. means he has to be impartial. End of story. Uh, I don't mind if he leaves yeah. the BBC and right. tweets whatever okay, he wants about the Okay, but here's the rub on it. It's quite clear when the lawyers got into it that that contract was not as strong as they thought it was. Mm. So what was? why didn't somebody check that before doing the suspension. So my criticism is twofold. One towards Lineker, why doesn't he just go and work somewhere else? Yeah. He can have as much free speech as he does. And he'll make more money. But, yeah, make, and yeah. he can tweet that the Tories are Nazis all day long Absolutely. and none of us will give a damn. Absolutely. Just like we don't give a damn now that Emily Maitlis And that's, and that's why he doesn't day. want to quit, by the way. Yeah. But on the other side, then you've got, some, you've got Tim Davey, who probably makes four or five hundred grand a year, supposed to be the big panjandrum, he's the great future, came from the commercial side of the BBC, he knows about money, right? Completely cocks it up. So he shouldn't hang around. We need somebody vile to go in there. Who have you got? I've offered myself twice, and you know I've been <laughs> I've been rejected. I felt I was even rejected by GB News. That's how tough I am. But no, but seriously, there has to be a change. There has to be a change. And what's going to happen now is that Sharp, the chairman, who should never have been elected, should never have been put in position anyway as the chairman, he's likely to get yeah. the elbow. So you're going to be in the bizarre position of, of the chairman being fired and Lina could yeah. carry on standing there. Yeah, I, I, but again. And I'm not saying this to defend Richard Sharp at all, but the conflation of the two positions, Lineker's and Sharp, is so intellectually dishonest. Yeah. You know, the BBC chairman position, as you well know, has always been a party political position. It is a political appointment. Under Blair, he put an absolute Labour multi-millionaires to that job. And, I mean... Goodness me, under Blair, Greg Dyke, you know, who was a paid-up member of the Labour Party until the day he became Director General, took the job, and there was no issue with that. So the two things are completely separate. No, but let, no, let's be honest about it. But we didn't have a chairman who before arranged for 800 grand no. to go towards, no. to, towards no, but, the they, Prime Minister who then gave they, him the but job. They were, accused, they were accused of being Labour stooges. They were. And they were paid-up members they of the were, Labour Party. They were, that is true. You know, it is a political appointment, the chairman of the the BBC and okay. being a presenter on the BBC. Okay, when we meet next thing. week, or on Thursday actually, tell me, will Sharp still be there? Well, I think they're going to wait for this review to uh, to come through. Yeah. But <laughs> Would you bet on it? No, absolutely not. The mood music from Sunak, uh, who, by the way, is throwing an old mate under the bus because he used to work for him, didn't he, at a bank we used to know yeah, him, yeah. at least a bank. The mood music coming from Sunak is, no, this man's going to go. Got, uh, Calvin McKenzie, we will speak on Thursday, see if he's in post at that point. But it's time now to reveal today's greatest Britain and Union Jackass. Oh, there we go. So my superstar panel are going to return for this. Carol Malone, who's your GB nominee? 
Mine was inspired by a tweet from Kelvin today, and it's, <laughs> it's the three Five Live Sports reporters, John Murray, Alistair Bruce Ball, um, Andy and Dennis, who defied the picket line of multi-millionaire ex-footballers, who, along with other commentators, followed the left-wing herd at the weekend, i.e. refused to do their job. Uh, these three guys went into work, they did what they paid for, and they got called scab, they got called all sorts of other names, yeah. but they did it anyway. They're Good not on scabs, them. they're responsible employees. Good on them. Benjamin Butterworth, your nominee. Well, mine is Gary the Great. Uh, Gary Lineker, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, you know, completely nailed the BBC. He stood up for his freedom of speech. Oh, and as a YouGov poll showed today, the majority of the British people want him to stay at the BBC. Yeah, but by the way, the majority of the British Gary. public also agree with the government stop the votes policy. Belinda De Lucy, your nominee. Uh, my greatest uh, Brit today is Shamira Nessa. She is a brilliant British comedian, very, very funny. She's got seven million followers on TikTok. She has been helping defend and protect children from adults on TikTok who want to isolate children uh, on private messaging to discuss sex and gender. She is helping okay. all us mums out by protecting Well, look, I I'm going to go with TikTok. the folks at Five Live that Carol Malone nominated because, you know, you had people on Twitter describing them as scabs yeah. and good on them for turning up to work. I was very happy with that. There you go. Congratulations to them. Carol Malone, who is your uh, uh, Union Jackass nominee? It's the BBC, particularly Tim Day for caving into Gary Lineker like a big wobbly jelly. The guy is now invincible. He can do what the hell he likes, despite the fact that this weekend 500,000 more people watched Match of the Day than yeah, did good last point. with him and his I mates. Were it, the ratings went up. Benjamin Butterworth, your nominee. Uh, judging by the tweets, it should be my cardigan because everyone seems to hate it. <laughs> but I'm going Well, we with... think you've got your head in the clouds, that's <laughs> for sure. Oh, you spent all night waiting for that one, haven't you? Uh, it has to be Tory Tim Davey. Uh, I hate that, again, I agree with Kelvin McKenzie <laughs> several weeks in a row now, but the fact is he's completely out of his okay. depth. He's had no good... OK. You know, he didn't know what to do in a crisis. Belinda De Lucy, your nominee. Ah, it has to be Fat Boy Slim. He's been added to the growing list of ivory tower lovey millionaire wet wipes who have supported Gary Lineker at his concert. He put a huge uh, picture of Gary Lineker as if to worship him for I a know, while. Like weird cult. But look, I'm going to go with Carol Malone what? again. Oh. It's the BBC <laughs> the because these champagne socialists think that they've had a victory, but I think actually this is the start of the decline of the British Bashing Corporation as we know it. Carol Malone. Benjamin Butterworth, Belinda De Lucy, my superstar panel. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for coming back after my little break. And I'm back again tomorrow night from 9 p.m. Cannot wait for that. Headliners is up next, so with its irreverent take on tomorrow's newspaper headlines. Good night. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel.
Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven, on Jubes and Co. Right, you're uh, an inspiration to us all. Clip that bit off. Well, you oh, are. Well, that's you, my you, you, no. My political ambitions are those days are gone. I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like on Jubes and Co. Come and join us, GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubry, weekday evenings at six o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians. Yes, <laughs> right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it. Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. Good evening, you're with GB News. In a moment, headliners. But first, let's bring you the latest news headlines. And our top story tonight, British firm Rolls-Royce will help build a new fleet of nuclear-powered submarines as part of a new pact between the UK, Australia and the United States to bolster defences and create thousands of jobs. The Prime Minister, his Australian counterpart Anthony Albanese and US President Joe Biden met in San Diego, California to announce the next stage of the so-called AUKUS programme. It was signed initially by the three nations in 2021 to boost defences and counter China's threat in the Indo-Pacific region. And this news comes as number 10 today announced defence spending will rise by almost £5 billion over two years. Rishi Sunak has called the trilateral AUKUS submarine deal the most significant multilateral defence partnership in generations. The UK comes to this with over 60 years' experience of running 